Fifteen people. Oh. Right. Give them more couple of minutes and then we'll get started. Cool. Thanks, Hayshon. Thanks to be my to be my most authentic self with a fear of judgment and shame. Cool. No worries. Anyone else want to share why they here today? Is this couple on the chat that um people want to learn? Oh, it's a lot. Um, want to get better at meeting, talking to people in all kinds of social situations. Jenny says she wants to learn a thing or two. Angel says she wants to become the best version of um herself. Uh, Xia Shi says she wants to get the tips when interacting with new people. Joseph wants to learn new things. Um. Yes. Are we still waiting on someone? I think it's five minutes in. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah, we can get started. Um, yeah, because let's see Miss Reading. I have a feeling talking to humans face to face as I have to show. So no more tips, how to code. Cool. No worries. Thanks for sharing everyone and thanks for being honest. Um, all right, we can get started now. All right, uh, so I'll be the first speaker for today. Um and then followed by Claire and uh Roy who will be coming uh very soon. And yeah, my topic for today is um how to you uh overcome social anxiety by improving on your social skills. Um and yeah, to be more confident to be able to connect with people. That's gonna uh what gonna be uh, that's what I'm gonna say um talk about today. And then Claire, what are you going to share today, Claire? Yes, yeah, so I will be sharing about mastering your nervous system. So very practical techniques, uh, especially the breathing techniques that a lot of you have um, heard about to just take deep breath. Okay, so I'm giving you very specific breathing techniques that you can use when you're in, when those anxiety arises. Oh. So yeah. Sounds great. And I believe Roy will be talking about anxiety, um, getting real anxiety. So I'll get him to talk later on, um, which is cool. All right. So yeah, some of you shared that um, to get better at meeting and talking to people in all kinds of social situations, uh, tips when interacting with people, etc. So yeah, cool. All right. So I'll I'll, I'll start from my end. So I'm gonna share the screen right now. Um, cool. All right, can everyone see the screen? Yeah. Cool, sounds great. No worries. So yeah, uh, <clears throat> so I welcome you uh, once again today to today's um, How to Overcome Social Anxiety. And yeah, so uh, I'll start from my part, improve your social skills and to be able to connect with confidence in 2024. Um, so yeah, I'll just ask you about um, why did you come today, today's workshop. And and um yeah, basically, yeah, you came to the right place if you really want to know some hints and tips on how to overcome society, uh, to be able to socialize better, to be able to uh, be more confident around people, uh, which is cool. Uh yeah, uh, I have a Facebook page. Feel free uh, to follow me because I'll be of that set. I um actually do a lot of uh, content posting creation on how to uh imp improve your social skills. So if you want to uh, join my page, feel free to. 
Uh, and yeah, we have a diverse, a uh, lot of people from all different places. We've got Philippines, we've got Singapore, we've got Malaysian, we've got Australia in Sydney, Canberra. Uh, yeah, uh, all sorts of places. It's good. Welcome. Uh, so I just want to ask you guys a question first. Uh, on a scale of one to 10, how confident are, are you in your social skills based on your current situation? So one is you're not good at socializing, whereas 10, you're super good at socializing. Can you just type in the chat box, which one is you? So we got one, no problem. <laughs> Anyone else? Six, Ash says six, Matilda says six, iPhone said one, Jenny said five, Hazel says six. Hmm, interesting. No worries. Thanks for being honest, by the way. Joseph says six as well. Perfect. Team. Okay, six, six, six. All right. So yeah, I just want to let you know that uh, social skills can be learned. It's like learning a new language uh, other than English. So social skills is transfer of skill to you. So you can learn that social skills and put the skills to the test. People are still joining in, which is good. So what is the impact of having confidence in your social skills? Uh, so this is what some of my clients say about this that have gone through my program. They say that connecting with people is scary. Uh, they have so they have low self esteem when meeting people. Uh, they have uh, they just they just don't have the confidence. Here comes Roy. Um, and confidence work. They feel nervous and shy when it comes to meeting new people. Uh, they want to grow the network, but where do I start? I'm scared of connecting with people. So my goal for you today is to spend the next thirty minutes learning how to improve on the number you just wrote down on the chat box. So if you're a one or a five or six, how do you get higher? How do you improve on your social skills? So this is my type of clients. Uh, hands up if you fall into these categories. Uh, if you lack social skills, if you lack social confidence, if you have social media anxiety, uh, you have um, anxiety or depression, you're shy, you're nervous, you're introverted, um, you want to improve your communication skills such as ice breaking and starting an in interesting conversation. Uh, you don't know how to build trust, rapport with others when connecting. Uh, you want to grow a big network, but you don't know how to. Uh, you basically have not, not don't have much friends, or you have no friends at all. You feel lonely, and you want to be, build more friendships. Uh, you want to be promoting a job, be profitable in your business, want to be in a relationship, or if you have autism. So uh, type in the chat box which of these apply to you. I'll give you a couple of uh, give you a minute or two. Just uh, just have a look on this list. And then tell me which ones strike you the most, which, which ones that you want or you have. Just going to look at a chat box when everyone types. Any takers that you want to share? Okay, cool. We've got the first one, anxiety and feeling overwhelmed in groups. Okay, cool. Thanks for sharing, Matilda. Anyone else? Okay, cool. Um, Ash said bigger network. Uh, Hazel said lacking social confidence, have social anxiety, be promoting my job. Introverted personality when connecting with others. Improving communication skills in the workplace. Mm. Sounds great. Thanks for sharing. So your permission today, uh, I might speak a little bit fast. I might have a half Aussie accent because I'm from Australia. Uh, I want to provide you with valuable content and then offer for you towards the end as well. Just a little bit about myself. Uh, so I'm a social skills coach. Uh, I'm a two-time published author. I've published two books, which is on Amazon right now on uh, social skills and communication skills. And I'm also a, a motivational speaker. So. In Sydney, I've been uh, featured in a lot of uh, radio interviews, shows, uh, and I also my books in Demis bookstores, local bookstores in Sydney. 
uh, been doing speaking gigs at UDSW, uh, worked with the New South Wales government on uh, conducting workshops, and I've been doing a lot of corporate training at other uh, reputable companies as well. And I'm also a, a certified life coach and a NLP, and I'm NLP certified neuro linguistic programming. And recently did a Cambridge course um, in English. Uh, so I'll be teaching uh, English skills and as, as English language and as well as um, how to socialize better in the Western society more. And just a little bit about my story. Uh, so this is my two books. Left side is The Social Way. The right side is The Connecting with Confidence. So basically in 2019, uh, I wrote this book called The Social Way because uh, before I was very shy, very introverted. I was nervous around people and I had social anxiety, severe social anxiety around people, around toxic people. So it got to the point where I was very vulnerable to being bullied. And uh, it got to the point where I was under depression I was hospitalized three times because people bullied me. And so I said to myself, I'm going to write this book to help people to find like-minded people to connect with them and also send a message to people who bully others that is not good because it affects people's mental health. Yeah, and that's how I started this journey to improve people's social skills. And on the right-hand side, connect with confidence. This is uh, my business. So I, I, I teach people how to connect with confidence, how to improve your social skills so you can connect with people better whether it's from a, a business level, whether it's for a, your, your corporate job level or from a social perspective as well. And my vision is to make a world a safer place to live in with uh, ethical social skills. And my role here today is, bas is basically I help entrepreneurs, uh, split, uh, small business owners and corporate professionals uh, with socializing difficulties to have social confidence, to be able to connect with anyone at any time. Hence my background, learn how to connect with anyone at any time. So I want to ask you guys a question. What is the hardest part when you connect with people? Please type in the chat box. What, what do you think is the hardest part for you when it comes to socializing or interacting or connecting with people? iPhones are feeling awkward and breaking the ice. Okay, cool. Anyone else? Small talk. Okay. Small talk's hard. Okay. Yeah, so small talk. Anyone else? Mm, okay. iPhone. Fear of awkwardness. And okay, iPhone is still as cool. Uh, team engaging small talk beyond weather, job, etc. Okay, cool. Hazel difficulty regulating my nerves. Okay, maybe Claire can help you out with the nerves. Uh, all right, let's keep going. And my promise for you today is to uh, how to go from shy, introverted, nervous, lack of confidence to be able to connect with confidence in 90 days without having to feel awkward at all. Uh, okay. Matilda says sometimes not always just get overwhelmed and want to get leave away. I feel a sense of shame. Uh, versus other person due to past abuse. Okay, no worries. I guess that's trauma. So how? So it comes down to the obvious question: How do I do it? Uh, do I want to improve my social skills in a for my process of trial and error? Or, or you want to use a system to fast track you to be able to improve on your social skills. So it's slow or fast. So type in the chat box. You want to use the process of try and error and hope for the best or follow a proven system that's going to help you to get where you want to be and overcome your social anxiety. Type in the chat box, which one applies to try and error or system? System. Okay, cool. Jenny says system. System. Ash says system. Cool. No worries. So my system is basically called the Magnetic Connector Program. Uh, so I won't go through that too much today, uh, but I do have programs that help people to uh, improve on their social skills, be more confident, grow their network, and yeah, it makes life uh, easier for them and be more happy, if that makes sense. 
system, system, system. Cool. So it's not right for everyone. Uh, if you don't want to change your life, if you don't want to improve yourself, that is not for you. But for those that want to improve, uh, this system is designed to help you to break through any challenges you might have uh, when socializing with people and break the barrier of social anxiety. So I built this system to help people to go from nervous, shy, introverted, and lack of confidence to become successful networkers and also to grow a profitable network. Uh, this, this system is designed to give you confidence when you connect with people, a huge quality network and increase your net worth, um, and also gives you influential powers and fame as well. So the three months program, I uh, won't go to it uh, on this today. Um, so now I'm going to show you one of my uh, ex uh, past clients. So her name is Hada Bensel. Uh, so she uh, she's one of my, my previous clients. So she's an English teacher by trade and also teaches English. And she came to me because she wants to be able to connect with people better, especially with adults, because uh, she had the anxiety in herself, social anxiety when it comes to connecting with people. And I hope you can resonate with her. So I'll show this very quickly. My name is Hada. I've been a teacher for a very long time. And I am now turning, instead of being working for other people, I want to have my own business. Now, in order to have my own business, I need to be able to connect with other people and let them know what my business is about. It's not just teaching English or teaching um, I need to connect with other people and learn about what they actually need and this way I will improve my program and my website and I'll be able to actually have a functioning business. It's a scary move. I have to change a lot of things in the way I think and the way I do things. And this is where I met Sam Lee. And I have done his foundation course, which has helped me a great deal, has given me a lot more confidence, a lot more ideas how to go about approaching people, how to start a conversation. And I have actually joined his next level up group because I'm very happy and very appreciative of the way he works and the way I feel and the confidence that I have been gaining that this will help me not only in business but in a lot of other ways. Before I was very shy and the only time I open up is in front of kids. Now I can open up in front of adults and I can do the things that I really want to do. So thank you very much and I really appreciate that help. Thank you. All right, so that's just one of my uh, client, uh, previous clients on how to uh, break through uh, her anxiety when it comes to meeting people and socializing with people, uh, another testimonial. Um, so yeah, I just want to talk about another client of mine. Um, his name is Arvid. So Arvid is an immigration agent by, by business. So he runs his own business and he came to me because he wanted to improve on his social skills because uh, he, yeah, like he's very shy, he's very introverted. He, he has social anxiety when it comes to meeting people. So yeah, he came to me for coaching, and before, yeah, like I said, it's very shy, very introverted, very nervous when it comes to meeting people. So, but he wanted to build more trust with his clients because uh, in order to build trust with his clients, you need to know how to socialize effectively, build that instant of them. And yeah, just during the coaching process, uh, I, was, I, I was able to find a lot of blind spots, which is stopping him from being able to connect with the receiver, with his clients, et cetera. And yeah, just after being coached by me, he felt uh, he transformed a lot. He actually uh, felt more confident around uh, his clients and he was able to sign more clients due to be able to socialize with them as well. Yep, uh, Jenny said that. So um, yeah, I'll be going into the uh, content very soon. So just um, be a little bit patient. And my reason for sharing today is um, Unfavorable uh, social skills is the worst bad habit that anyone could have. Uh, we keep doing the same thing over the years without knowing it is harmful when connecting with people around us or other individuals, friends, etc. So yeah, what's been most what's been most useful so far, and and could this be you? 
So I'm going to go into a bit of the um, the content in terms of how to socialize better, um, how to make an entrance, how to make an exit. So I'll start with the introductory greeting first. I want to ask you guys a question. How many seconds does it take for someone to form an impression of you? So please type in the chat box, how many seconds does it take to form for someone to form the first impression of you? iPhone set free, Jackie set 30 seconds, Nat set five seconds, Hazel set 10 seconds, Ash set 10 seconds, Tim set three to five seconds. All right, any, any second, five seconds, Matilda one second, all right. I think we had a winner here today. Um, the winner is Tim. He said three to five seconds, but yeah, I just want to let you know, I didn't make this up. So back by science, um, back by science that it takes someone uh, first three seconds to form a first impression of you. So the way you uh, grip people, the way you uh, present yourself, the way you dress speaks for about yourself. So when the first people meet you, the way you greet, et cetera, speaks following about yourself as well. So here are the pros and cons of uh, knowing how to greet people properly. And guess what? If you do it right, you'll make a positive first impression. Uh, you know how to ice break properly. You have confidence, charisma, positivity. You'll be successful, uh, respect and professionalism. And guess what? If you don't know how to greet people properly, uh, you'll make a negative first impression. Uh, embarrassment, awkwardness, uh, rejection, shy, nervous, and it's a turn off and it's not professional at all. Uh, so intro introductory greeting is very simple. Like some people overcomplicate things, but first step is to say hi, what's your name? And then you will smile and handshake and it will do a warm welcome. How are you going today? Or how are you? And are you the kind of person that initiates the handshake when you connect with people? So type in the chat box, do you normally initiate the handshake or are you the passive kind of person that waits for someone to shake your hand? Type in the chat box if you initiate or if you type passive. 50, initiate, 50, 50, initiate. Nalia, Nala said, initiate the handshake, cool. Anyone else? Passive, okay, Hazel said passive. Alrighty, cool. Joseph said passive. I'm a big softy, okay? <laughs> it's all right, that can change. Annie said passive. Oh, no worries. So I just let me, I just want to let you know why initiating a handshake is good because it shows you're willing to connect with the person. Uh, it shows you're open and you're friendly and you're uh, sincere and genuine as well. And the handshake is like a, it's a, it's a language itself. Uh, it shows how confident you are as a person, your personality type, whether it's shy or you're outgoing, and how sincere you want to connect with the person. And I always say this, when you shake someone's hand, perform a firm handshake. Just like yesterday, I ran a masterclass. I did a handshake in, uh, in front of people, like in front of my students, and then I had all sorts of handshakes. So some people very firm, some people very squeeze very hard, some people... Uh, very soft when they when they don't firm up and I, and I always tell them always to perform a firm handshake so the other person uh, feels the grip of the hand handshake and I know before we had COVID so no one's going to shake the hands right so we had uh, fist pumps or elbow knocks so but now we're back to yeah um, out of COVID and then we're actually going back to handshakes and also um, also have a welcoming tone of voice focal tonality is a goes a long way. The way you project your voice around people speaks uh, confidence and your your general interest in the person as well. So if you have a soft uh, volume, like vo soft uh, voice, uh, just try to be uh, in a middle, in a medium, in a medium level, uh, like um, medium level volume, and that's gonna help you out as well. And not too loud, so like things that people are shouting at you as well. And also when you smile, uh, when you perform the handshake, smile, a smile goes a long way. When you, it shows your friendliness, it shows your positivity around people. So when you shake someone's hand, uh, smile, always smile, which is good. 
Uh, this is just uh, my previous uh, gen uh, case study uh, client client of mine before. I shook her hand, Janet's hand, and that's why I couldn't feel anything when I perform a handshake uh, because I told her to firm up because she gave me a very soft handshake and that's not uh, doesn't project confidence at all. And also, don't sweat the small stuff. So I'm not sure if you're a sensi sensitive person or non-sensitive. So uh, type in the chat box if you're a sensitive person or a non-sensitive person. So what I mean by uh, sensitivity is when someone says something wrong or something like that, when you first meet the person, you will like say something to them or uh, something negative or something like that. Uh, let me know if that's you. So type in the chat box, are you sensitive or you're not sensitive? Joseph is sensitive. Uh, Nala is sensitive. Jacques is sensitive. Belinda is sensitive. Okay, cool. Hing, all right, wow, everyone's sensitive around here. So uh, what I want to let you know, if you're sensitive, try to be less sensitive because that goes a long way. If you're sensitive, it might scare people away and that might be that might uh, stop you from connecting with the person because uh, once you're sensitive, like you might run into an argument or if you personal attack someone, then um, that's not a good thing to do. So um, this is what I teach, to not sweat the small stuff. So once you uh, train yourself to become not sensitive, then great things happen. And uh, why shouldn't you sweat the small stuff? Because uh, if you have a good tolerance level, it shows you as a per positive person, you're likable, you're careful, you're mentally strong, and it also builds instant rapport of people as well. So when this is just some, some uh, like say example, sensitivity, when people say to you, "Oh, sorry, can you stand a bit, a, a little, a little bit further away?" As I'm claustrophobic, uh, that person right there is giving me the shits. Uh, let's go straight to the point. Be more specific. Uh, sorry, I have a bit, of, I have a bit of an odor because I ran here. Sorry, I'm the I'm on the phone right now. Uh, it's getting a bit too personal. I prefer not to say. Uh, what are we doing over the weekend? A bit personal. I prefer not to say. So if you say any, so if any other people, uh, like, like just out of the ordinary, just say something like that to you. The magic word to counter that is take a deep breath and say, that's okay, no worries, in a peaceful voice. And sit, let, let that work its magic when you when you speak to people. Uh, yeah, if you need help, I can help you out as well to be more or less sensitive around people. So let's talk about you now. So have you been making a positive first impression? Are you performing the right introductory greeting? Do you feel that you're doing everything right or is there some mistakes that you're not noticing? Are you presenting yourself confidently, such as the handshake, your focal tonality, and the way you present yourself, such as dressing? Are you engaging correctly with people and converting into connections? And are you able to tolerate little things but not sweating the small stuff? So what kind of these mistakes have you been most guilty of and how has this cost you? So I want, to, I want you to make a decision right now. Do you want to connect using your old style or you want to try a new style, which is to correctly connect with connect with people with confidence, et cetera. So type in the chat box. You want to use the old style or you, you want to use your old style. You want to try a new style, a new method. Now I said new style. Cool. Sounds great. Joseph said new. Cool. No worries. Belinda, new style, new style. Jackie, correctly connect with confidence. Sounds great. And like I said before, I help people to go from shy, introverted, nervous, and lack of confidence to social confidence within 90 days uh, without having to feel awkward at all. And the next topic is the most important topic. Uh, how to converse comfortably and, co and confidently. Uh, I can guarantee you most of my clients that I've been coaching they struggle with conversation skills, like what to say, not to say, uh, how to go from uh, ice breaking to small talk, and how to go from small talk to long talk. So some people can so just uh, able to uh, small talk only, but they're not able to keep the conversation rolling. So it makes it interesting and to be able to build instant rapport with people that you meet suddenly. So here are the pros and cons of conversations. Guess what? If you do it right, um, you'll project confidence. You'll be interesting. It makes you relate to the receiver. 
Uh, lots of things to talk about. Uh, go past the superficial. Hi, how are you? Uh, make a great impression. You can find common grounds. You can also connect at a deeper level. Uh, and guess what? If you don't do conversation uh, properly, you'll be embarrassing, you'll be awkward, you'll be nervous, you can't relate to the receiver. There's nothing to talk about. Bad impressions, unable to find common grounds, and the receiver walks away from you. And that's the last thing you want. So I want to ask you guys a question. I type in a chat box. I uh, like. Are you good in conversations or are you bad? Type in the chat box. Good or bad? Okay, JQ said bad. Okay, cool. Half and half. Now said half and half. All right. Cool. No worries. Anyone else? Belinda said bad. Okay. Cool. Tim said 50-52. Okay. So it can be good and bad. No dramas. I always like this topic. Conversation about the weather is the last refuge of the imaginative. So this, so what, what does this mean by mean to you? Would this mean that uh if you talk about the weather, it's bo is uh it's boring, it doesn't get the conversation rolling? That's what uh what it means basically. And here are some uh taboo topics. So what what I mean by this? When you first uh, talk to someone, like converse with someone, it's always not to uh it's best practices not to go into these topics, such as religion, sex, politics, money, uh, victim narratives, personal tragedies, and medical issues. So if you go into any of these topics, uh, it like <clears throat> it might people might be sensitive. Like some of you said uh, already, you're sensitive. So if you go into any of these topics. It might trigger them as well to start uh, arguments or anything like that. And that's the last thing you want if you want to connect with people. And I always say this, uh, keep the uh, topics of conversation general <clears throat> without being personal or offensive, especially when you first meet the person. So yeah, generalize your topics and don't go into taboo topics. That's, that's, what, that's my uh, advice to you. Uh, here are some open-ended questions. Feel free to write it down. Uh, open-ended for the close-ended questions. If you've been saying these close-ended questions, so close-ended questions basically means yes or no questions. So if you've been saying, "How's the weather today?" Uh, it's pretty. It's all right. Uh, how how old are you? I prefer I prefer not to say. How's your mood today? Uh, good or bad? And then are you single? No, no one's gonna say that, right? It's because it, it be that's very uh, embarrassing, right? <laughs> and uh, here are some open-ended questions. The the purpose of open-ended questions allows the people to answer the question and then leads the conversation even further. Like after uh, the lunch. You make a lunch. We have to. I have to. Okay. Okay. Maybe you first. Whoops. Uh, meet. Okay, cool. Uh, yeah. So here are some questions that you can say, like, what are um, what are we, what are you doing over the weekend? Uh, what sports do you like doing? What hobbies do you like? Uh, what do you do for work? Any holiday plans coming up? So if you ask some open-ended questions, that's gonna spark interest, and that's how you can find common grounds as well. And I want to ask you guys a question: Would you pro would you re uh, prefer to ask open-ended questions or close-ended questions? Uh, type in the chat box if you prefer open or closed. Open ended, no. Ash open. Okay, sounds good. No dramas. Nice said open. Yep, yep. Everyone's on the right track. Cool. And why common interests? So um the secret to having good conversations is actually to find common grounds, common interests, mutual interests, commonalities, etc. Why? Because it builds intimacy and instant rapport. Uh people would want to be more enthusiastic and interested to talk to you. That's more excitement and wow factor, more smile from the receiver and an enjoyable experience. People will be excited and start to confess to the depth and the common interest that you might have together. And it also has alignment. And feel free to write this down. In order to find common, common interests, here are some questions that you can say to people when you first connect with them. So what do you like to do normally? Uh, what do you do outside of work? What are your hobbies? What do you do over the weekend? And then once you uh, start saying all this, they'll be help you as well. So Tim said, what if you can't add to their interest? Comes across fake and asking about a boring hobby. 
that's okay. Um, just go through some particular topic that you can both resonate. Uh, if you kind of have interest, talk about uh, yeah, personal stories, but uh, yeah, let them just say some particular topic that you can resonate with, uh, Tim. And if it's okay, like not everyone's gonna connect with each other because everyone's got different interests, right? Everyone's got different personalized interests. So say for example, you're in a, a networking event, you go to a business networking event or a social networking event. Uh, like I said, you need to find the right people to connect with. And uh, if you find common common interests that you can talk about, then that's gonna go a long way. So for those you think that you don't connect, uh, you don't resonate or you can connect with, go to the next person or something like that. And if you find common grounds, these are the people you want to connect with. No worries. And the secret to finding common interests, uh, write this down, is to probe deeper with more questions. It's not just about asking one question, um, like say, okay, you both like playing basketball. Oh, cool. Where do you, you need to ask more questions within a question. So cool. Oh, I play basketball as well. Uh, where do you play? Do you play competition or you just play socially? Uh, do you like shooting? Do you like rebounding? Or you can ask all these questions that sparks interest with the person. So you need to prove to the other person about the common interest that you know you know what it's about. So you're not actually just bluffing or or lying or anything like that. And uh, the more common interest you find, <clears throat> the more easier you can connect with the receiver. These just facts. If you can find more than one common interest, like when you connect, when you talk to the person, then you know this person you can relate to and you can, uh, yeah, start becoming friends with each other. And this is just uh, one of my previous clients, uh, Dipendu. He couldn't go past the superficial grading, but after being coached by me, he was asked to asking the right questions. He was able to make engaging conversations with people he meets. So let's talk about you now. Have you been conversed in the right way with people you haven't met before? Have you got past the superficial chit chat and made engaging conversations? Have you been asking the right kinds of questions or are you going to taboo topics? Are you making it awkward for you and the receiver? And are you happy with the conversation skills in general? So what kind of these mistakes have you been most guilty of and how has this cost you? So like I said before, do you want to keep using an old style or you want to try a new style, which is to do professional to do things professionally from now on and stop uh, burning burning your connections, burning out your connections. And like I said before, I help people to go from shy, introverted, nervous, and lack of confidence to be able to connect with confidence in 90 days without having to feel awkward at all. So I, I believe that when you connect with someone, it starts with making an entrance all the way to making an exit. So in between that, you need to know how to make a good first impression, you need to promote uh, open gestures in your body language. You need to have a good attitude and mindset. Uh, using social media, building a report online uh, is key as well. We live in this digital age. Uh, and, use, and in order to grow a network, you need to have, uh, uh, like, say, Facebook, LinkedIn, or Instagram, or anything like that to grow your network online as well. And uh, confessing comfortably, uh, conversation skills are important. Having a, good uh, having a good sense of humor goes a long way as well and also establishing boundaries and bottom lines. So here are the pros and cons of uh, connecting. Uh, if you do it right, you make that first impression count. It builds instant rapport, connection is made, collaboration opportunities, success, network increase, profitability, potential, self-fulfillment. And guess what? If you don't know how to connect with people properly, you'll make a bad impression, you'll, be, you'll have frustration, connection is burnt, rapport is not built, rejection, humiliation, embarrassment, and stress. So this is like a cheat sheet uh, that I normally teach uh, my clients. So how to connect with confidence. There's a lot of hints and tips that you can utilize to build trust with the person you're connecting with. And once you do all of this, then you can connect. Uh, if you want a free uh, cheat sheet, you want this free cheat sheet, just uh, type in a chat box cheat sheet. And I'm, and I'm happy to send you a, this cheat sheet as well. So you can have some reference on how to connect with people. So yeah, feel free to type in the chat box, cheat sheet, and I can message you later on once I finish my part. Uh, yeah, so some of them, uh, Charles Klein's uh, case study. Um, I'll keep going with this. Uh, so let's talk about you now. Are you feeling confident now or do you need help? Do you realize what is stopping you from making quality connections? 
Uh, is there something wrong with the way you're interacting with people? Are you just going to keep going like this? Or, or you really want to be, or you want to change your life and be successful, be more happier, get rid of that social anxiety so you can be more fulfilled in life. And do you feel that your social skills are up to standards? All right, cool. And we have some cheat sheets here. I'll send you out later on. Uh, so what kind of these mistakes uh, have you been most guilty of and how has this cost you? Like I said before, like you want to just use a process of trial and error, hope for the best. Or you want to do perfect, if you want to do things professionally from now on, that will be great. So I want to draw a line in the sand for you. For those people that want to jump over the sand, I can help you. But for those that don't jump over the sand, you're just going to be like the same. You're not going to change. You're going to feel miserable. But if you really want to take your, you really want to get out of your comfort zone to get rid of that over, overcome social anxiety, I can definitely help you. And uh, I don't know why you showed up today. It could be you just don't know how to connect with people and it's making you frustrated. Uh, you want to improve on your social skills and confidence when interacting with people that matter to you. Or you're just naturally shy, nervous, and lack confidence when it comes to meeting people. And lesson one, uh, now you know that when you start a conversation with others that you shouldn't go into taboo topics that are sensitive towards others and learn how to engage better with the receiver by asking interesting and open-ended questions and as well as uh, finding common grounds. Lesson two, when you make an entrance to connect with the receiver, don't make a bad impression by being nervous, shy, antisocial. Instead, connect with confidence by making a great first impression, such as dress, talk, greet, and engage professionally. And the last lesson is that, are, that there are skills to master in connecting with others. Just don't, wing, don't just wing it and hope for the best to improve. Know your blind spots, follow a proven system so you can convert and increase your chances to make connections that can last a lifetime and increase your network as well. And it also comes down to the obvious question. How do I do it? And uh, I want to ask you guys a question. Process of trial and error, or you want to follow a proven system that's going to help you out. So what a system actually means, it says when you've got a system, your results are much quicker. It means that it saves you substantial time, energy, and money. And uh, I've got programs uh, that I'm not going to go into today. Um, and like I said earlier, if you fall into any of these categories, such as lacking social skills, have social anxiety, depression, they qualify for me to help you out as well. And uh, yeah, for those that want to seriously transform themselves to take action and not just talk, because you will never grow if you if you don't take action at all. So the uh, magnetic connector uh, system, uh yeah i'm not gonna go through that today um and yeah just recap uh, this is my programs and yeah um if you want a free social skills assessment as well i'm giving it away so all you need to do is type in the chat box a free social skills assessment and we can uh, schedule that assessment after today and then we can set a time so i can so you can assess your uh, social skills uh if you want this i'm giving it uh, only to five people today uh, type in the chat box if you want a free social skills assessment to see where your social skills is at. And that's how I can help you out to improve your social skills forever. Yeah, uh, that's this is my part. I hope you got something out of today. Uh, any questions, feel free to type in the chat box now. Uh, here's the Q&A section for me. Uh, yep. If you don't have any, then uh, I'll introduce the next speaker. Okay, um, Naz said assessment. Being a set assessment, okay, cool. Social skills assessment, no worries. So I'll be messaging you privately after this, um, and then we can schedule that. All right, uh, thanks for uh, listening to my presentation. I hope you got something out of this. And I would, and I want to bring the next uh, speaker out today. Uh, her name is Claire Wu, and she'll be talking, uh, yeah, she'll be talking right now. So I'm gonna pass the stage to Claire. Claire, do you need to use slides? Uh, yes, uh, yes host. Host. thank you. All right, the stage is yours, Claire. Oh, thank you, Sam. That was great. I learned a few things. Do not go into taboo topic, which sometimes I accidentally got into, but I'm going to quickly share my screen and then making sure that everyone can see here. Right.
Okay. So today uh, I am going to talk about mastering your nervous system. Uh, my name is Claire Wu. I am the CEO founder from Breathe Into Peace. So I'm a registered therapist and business development expert. I have 15 years in the health and wellness space, and I help people manage their anxiety through functional jewelry, nervous system workshops, and programs. And these are the companies that I've worked with. I've worked with individuals and I've worked with hospitals as well. So the main thing is um, I like to just ask you, what do you really want to take away uh, from the session? I understand that uh, Sam is mostly talking about skills, but when it comes to like how your body feels when you're in the social situations, what would you want to feel? If you can type it in the chat, that'll be great. Just how to see how you want to feel. You can feel more confident, you can feel more calm or feel more grounded, can be anything. Um, and also, how do you feel like your mental wellness is at now? Because sometimes it's not just about social anxiety. Some of us has an anxiety in general uh, across multiple things. So how is your mental wellness now uh, on a scale of uh, zero to 10? One is like really, really bad. It's terrible. Five is still okay. Ten is like it's excellent. It's uh, sunshine and um, it's bright like today's weather in Sydney. Um, and also, what would you like to improve on? So overall, what would you like to improve on when it comes to your mental wellness? And I want to talk about this nerve it's because a lot of times, like I've heard from my clients is like, Clay, I'm, I'm stressed. And these clients are like uh, very accomplished. They could be uh, business analysts, could be engineers, could be um, lawyers, uh, could be, you know, all, in all walks of life. And they tell me like, Clay, I'm stressed. Uh, I, I'm feeling this wet in my palms. I'm feeling that my eyes is like, um, not able to to see properly i'm feeling really blurry all of that it's mainly because um they're not able to control their nerves and the more you understand about your nervous system the easier it is for, for you to uh, control it um so the main part when it comes to our nervous system this is the vagus nerve we call this the wonder nerve it's the longest nerve in the body it starts from the back of your um head um and it inserts into your eyes uh to your uh, the saliva glands and to your heart and your lungs and your stomach. Yeah. So you can see it goes onto your kidney, uh, your sexual organs and all of that. And that's why when we feel stressed, we're anxious. Sometimes we feel like we can't see properly. And then we having this, a lot of you will feel like you, you feel like the mouth is really dry um, and you feel like your heart beats really fast. And then you start to become a little bit breathless. You feel like you can't catch your breath. And then sometimes we have this like a butterfly kick and it's because this part of the nurse control part of your um, your uh, gut as well. Uh, some of you feel like you can't eat or some of you eat a lot and a lot of times you might feel like you want to go to the toilet a little bit more. So it's all related. It's really important to understand this nerve. Um, the more you understand, the more you're like, oh, okay, these symptoms are, are part of the symptoms of feeling anxiety. And, and then we can find ways to regulate this nerve and to help us to be more connected. So we have three nervous system states. Uh, you don't need to remember the name. It gets really complicated as a, as a physiotherapy with a minor in psychology. Uh, these are just three states I want you to remember. So the first one is uh, the vagal state where you feel very safe and connected and you're thriving. So when we're in this day, we feel really hopeful. We feel very joyful. Uh, we connect easily with others. So if you think about the time that you connect easily with others, it's not necessary in social situations, but it might be in the time where you are with your friends or with your family. And this day we are open, we're curious. Uh, it's easier for us to manage uh, situations and other people and we're able to make better decisions. So when we're in this state, we feel safe, we feel comfortable and we feel connected. Uh, and there's is another state called the dorsal vagal state. Again, the name doesn't matter. Uh, this In this day, you feel disconnected, you feel numb and you don't feel anything. A lot of us go into shutdown or 
freeze. You might have heard about it, like if, especially if you're at work, if someone says something that triggers you and you feel like, oh, this reminds me of my mom or this reminds me of something that I've been bullied. This reminds me of this. I shut down. So we disconnected not only from of ourselves, but then we also disconnect to other people and the world around us. And our expressions are a little bit like lifeless and the same. Um, we're not interested in anything, anyone. So the main thing is that uh, these three states, okay, so there's another state. The last one is the fight or flight state. I'm sure everyone has experienced this. It is like a survival mode. Um, it, type in the chat if you have experienced this before, you can just put in the yes. Um, in this state, uh, we are like, we lose control. Um, like what Sam say, like we we just we just want to attack the other person or we want to fight back. Um, it's because we we might have been triggered or we feel like we're being uh being uh perpetrated or you know something is out of our control. So we are wanting to fight, we wanted to attack or we want to fly off, and we feel overwhelmed by people or by situations. And sometimes our thoughts can be really dark. We could have a lot of anger, have a lot of fear, have a lot of aggressiveness, and we can't really think clearly. So we move between these three states. That's part of being human is that we move between these three states. And the key is to continuously to understand which state that you're at and you want to move closer to the ventral vagal state. Okay. So. I know I love anatomy, but I don't want to bore you with all the <laughs> all the parts with when it comes to the brain and the heart. But you just want you to remember this thing is called vagal break. Okay, this vagal break connects your brain to your heart. So this break is responsible to speeding up or slowing down your heart rate due to the needs around the situations. So you have you get access of a range of responses. Could be you know joyful, could be engagement, could be uh, excited, but also you can become a bit alert or you get a bit scared or you be watchful. So in able to um, get back into that more calm, connected uh, state, which will be useful in your social situations, is to let this break work on its own. So this break naturally works. Uh, it brings flexibility to our responses and transitions. And without this break, again, it's like your bicycle break. If you don't break, you just keep riding your bike the whole time. Like you never stop. You're constantly in this fight or flight, uh, constantly in this stress, um, uh, stressful feelings, uh, constantly in the anger, constantly in the states that it's really exhausting, very tiring. So the main thing is we want to activate this break uh, and then put a break on your bike and be like, okay, now we can relax, we can slow down, and we can be here and be now. Okay, so the flexible nervous system is making sure that you're not going to be calm all the time. I don't want you to be calm or be peaceful all the time, because that means you're, you're, you're basically dead. Uh, so the main thing is you want to um, uh, be, be more, I'm going to let this two other people in quickly. Okay. So the main thing is you want to be flexible. So we want to build a window of your tolerance, which that you have this tolerance to experience stress challenges at adversity or failures. You know, sometimes you go out, you try this social technique or you try this open or well, one line opener and it didn't work. Okay. That's fine. You know, you, you have this vagal break that can allow you to to fail to face stress to fail challenges to face challenges and then you're able to engage and re-engage so we want to make sure that this break uh work properly and these are some of the uh parts that we can see so when we are here okay so a lot of us my experiences we're at a workplace someone say something uh, well, in the social situation, someone says something, or you start to think about something, oh, I can't cope, I'm collapsing, I'm going to shut down, I'm so stressed out, I'm going to shut down. So I sit there, I don't do anything, I don't connect with anyone, and then you walk away from the social situations. But then some of you will be here, like, I'm in danger, I need to run, I need to fight back. Some of them will literally just flee, flee the place, or then you have a conversation with someone, you want to you want to argue with them. You want to fight with them. Sometimes you see that or you could be the one having those kind of a bit fearful conversation. So you want to move yourself up to here where you're in your ventral vagal. I'm connected. I uh, am having conversation with people and I feel safe. I feel okay in these uh, situations. 
So uh, I just want to ask, before we start any of the breathing exercise, have any of you tried breathing exercise? Raise your hand if you have. Raise your hand. I'm sure a lot of you heard about taking a deep breath. Okay. Anyone want to share how they take their deep breath? Okay, we have a couple more people take the deep breath. Do you find breathing exercise help for you? Yes or no? You can type in the chat, yes or no. It could be really honest because uh, it's a bit vague, right? Take a breath. <laughs> okay. So, um, yes, yeah, so breathing exercise. Uh, thank you all very much for responding. So, yes, a lot of us try breathing exercise. It's been taught again and again. It's used in the hospitals, but it's also used every way on the day to day. It's used a lot in meditation and yoga. But the main thing is there's so many breathing. There's so many breathing techniques. There's a hundred plus of them. So breathing, as we see from our um, our vagus nerve, one of the branches that it has the most innovation is in your lungs. So it has a lot in the lungs. So with breathing, it can actually turn on or turn down this vagus nerve. So you can turn up your emotions or you can turn down. Okay, just be mindful of that. So breathing is not always for calming the nervous system. So it's there is a hundred plus techniques is using a few techniques that's going to help you down regulate your nervous system. Okay, because I've got clients that told me I've tried breath work in this wind hop. I'm like breathing and then in the end, I feel like my panic get worse. Okay, because he's using the wind hop breath work that's helping you to give you energy. Okay, so you want to use the right breath work for the type of situation you're in. So here I'm giving you these two um, breathing techniques and I want you to practice with me here. This will help you to calm down before you go into a social situation, okay? So first, the B breathing. All right, so I want you to, um, so we're gonna aim for a bit of a practices. I want you just to sit comfortably, uh, both feet on the ground. Yes, okay, and we're gonna place our hands, our thumb against your ear. So here where your ear connects to your face. I want to press down here. So we're all basically closing the ears. And you can just put the other rest of the hands on top of your head, just like this. Yes. You're like a very cute, um, it's like a very cute hat. Great. So this is called the B breathing. Okay. So I just want you to breathing in through your nose and breathe out and making a sound. Mm as you breathe out good and we're going to breathe in again and just keep your hands where they are breathing into your nose and breathing out mm, with the vibrations mm, and again breathing into your nose and just keep your hands where they are and breathing out. Mm -hmm. As you make the sound, you can feel the vibration through your head, through your throat, and just keep your mouth closed. Very good. We're going to repeat for five more times. Yeah, so breathing in through your nose and breathing out. Mm -hmm. And again, breathing in through your nose and breathing out, mm, making the bumblebee humming sound. Mm. Three more time, breathing in through your nose and breathing out. Mm. Two more here, breathe in. And breathe out. Mm. Last one here, breathing in and breathing out. Mm. Very 
very good. And slowly you can drop your hands, hands a little bit sore. Okay, that's that's okay. <laughs> and just see how you feel. Um, and slowly resuming your breath. Yeah, so you can type in the chat how you feel after this practice of the bee breathing. And this is quite, actually uh, quite an ancient practice it's from the Hindu practice. Um, and it's that sound, that that vibration sound that actually soothes the nervous system. Okay, so you can do this one before you uh, go in to a meeting or going into a conference. Uh, you probably have to find a quiet place to do it. Um, and the second one, I'm actually feeling so Zen now. So it's it's a bit weird, <laughs> but <laughs> I feel like my public speaking nerves has gone. <laughs> so it's a bit odd. <laughs> and the second one is straw breathing. So this is my most favorable breathing because you cannot really tell if someone is doing straw breathing. Um, so straw breathing, it's fairly straightforward. So we're breathing through the nose for four seconds and then we breathe out through the mouth like we are blowing into the straw. So we let the breathe out really slow, long and consistent for eight to 10 seconds. And then we're breathing in again through the nose. Okay, so I want you to practice this with me. If you happen to feel sleepy or you wanna fall asleep, that's totally fine. You know, that's, that's what your nervous system needs. I know some of you might hold a lot of tension. So um, just sit comfortably, uh, place your feet both under the knees, make sure you're sitting upright. And we're just gonna breathing into your nose, two, three, four, and breathing out through your mouth, making an O shape, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And again, breathing into your nose, three, four, and exhale out through your mouth. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Inhale again through your nose. And exhale out through your mouth. Two, three, four, as long and as consistent as you can. Good. And breathing in again through your nose. Two, three, four, and exhaling out through your mouth. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Good, three more to go. Breathing in. Two, three, four, and breathing out. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Two more to go. Breathing in. And breathing out. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Well done. Last one here. Breathing in through your nose. Two, three, four, and breathing out through your mouth. Like you're blowing to a straw. Five, six, seven, eight. Well done. And just resume your usual breathing in and breathing out. And just notice how you feel in your body. Notice how you feel in your head, how you feel in your heart. And this exercise actually um, is the exercise that helps me to, um, to develop our breathing necklace. So because working with a lot of uh, clients and also working with myself as I suffer from anxiety from a very young age. I spent a lot of time, money and effort trying to find a way that helped regulating my anxiety every day. And that's why with the breathing necklace, what it does is that we use the straw breathing. So we breathe out through the necklace. It doesn't make any sound and eight to 10 seconds and then we're breathing in again. So we use the breathing necklace to do the straw breathing and that could help us regulate discreetly and elegantly. And because I'm wearing this, so whenever I feel anxious, I can grab this and just working on my, on my breathing. But again, this is not only applying uh, to social situations. Anytime you get triggered, you get stressed, you get anxious, it could be anything. Everyone's trigger is different is to, you know, learning to come back to your more grounded state 
with the breathing exercise that you can do. Okay, so type in the chat, let me know how you feel now. Do you feel more calm? Do you feel sleepy? Do you feel, I hope no one's energized after all this <laughs> breathing. <laughs> that would be a different deep breathing type of breathwork techniques. You could be feeling a bit tired. That's that's all normal. And just, you know, accept how you're feeling now. Um, so, yeah. So what we do is that we not only have our breathing necklace, we also have our journal that is uh, 190 pages of prompts that uh, ask you a lot of questions, helping you with how your worries, your gratitude, your triggers, your thoughts, your activities that you can do. So it helps you make you stay on the right track for your mental wellness. We also have our conversation cards, which will help you build meaningful connections. So we have around a hundred cards. Uh, we've sold, recently sold a thousand plus products uh, with over 4.8 um, satisfactions uh, in our review. So yeah, um, very grateful. I come up with this conversation card because I had the, I had the challenges <laughs> In, in dating, I'm finding the conversation very boring. And that's how I come up with the conversation card. So I want to make it more fun and enjoyable. So uh, feel free to check out some of the products and you can scan the QR code there. That would take you to our website and use the self love 10 uh, for our discount code and we ship worldwide. I'll also be dropping my link uh, onto the chat. Uh, and if you want to to further to learn any of the nervous system techniques and breathwork techniques, uh, feel free to book in the free call to have a chat. All right, thank you so much. I'm now going to hand over. I'm right on time, perfect. I'm gonna hand over to my dear friend, uh, Roy, to talk more about uh, anxiety. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Claire. I, I learned quite a few things. Um, bee breathing and straw breathing, which are both new concepts to me. Sam, will you, uh, can you give me permissions to share my screen, please? Claire, Claire, can you give me a host back? Yes. I oh, am... oh, make me host. Yeah. Oh, yes, yes, I will. Whilst make... everyone's uh, waiting, stretch. I know you've been sitting for quite a while, so <laughs> stretch your body if you can. Claire, can you give Roy the... Oh, yeah, yeah he's hoist now. Okay, cool. Okay, wonderful. Okay, can everyone see my screen? Thumbs up, yes. Great. So today I'll be talking about releasing stress and enhancing resilience. And I'll be talking quite fast because I've got quite a lot to cover through, to go through. First things first, in terms of introductions, I'd like everyone to type in the chat, where are you joining us from? Which country or city are you currently in? Sydney, Singapore, Canberra, Sydney, Brisbane. Wonderful. And I'll share a bit about my background and why I do what I do. So first of all, my mom was from Singapore and my dad was from Hong Kong. And I was born in Australia in a small country town called Kuma, population of 8,000. Um, whoever's from C Canberra knows where Kuma is. And my mom loves to make this joke. The best thing about having all her kids born in Kuma Hospital is that she didn't have to worry about a baby mix up at the hospital because there were no other Asian babies within a hundred kilometer radius. If I were to level with you, though, growing up in Kuma was very tough for me. So other than my brother and my sister, we were the only Chinese kids at school. And as a result of this, I experienced a lot of bullying and teasing. 
kids I didn't know would come up to me and pull their eyes back and call me Ching Chong Chinaman. I had a bully who would beat me up and pull my pants down. But the worst thing he'll do, he'll tell other kids not to be my friend. And as a result of this, I spent a lot of my lunch breaks and recess sitting by myself, feeling isolated, feeling anxious, feeling like I didn't belong, and really seeing myself as the ugly duckling. My biggest breakthrough came when my mom sent me to Singapore to study for one year and three years in Hong Kong. And as you can imagine, in those countries, I didn't look different. All the other kids had black hair, brown eyes, Asian. Though I was still different because I was from Australia. And that was a cool difference. Other kids would want to befriend me to improve their English. But I found that the friends who became my lifelong friends didn't like me because of where I was from. They liked me for who I am. And as a result of this, I became very confident, very talkative. When I came back to Australia, I was able to stand up to the bullies, which meant that I got into a lot of fights in high school. And there'll be times where I felt bruised and sore and hurt. And I felt like I lost the fight. But what was interesting was all these other kids would come and congratulate me because they, they hated the bully too. And what was more important was I learned how to make friends. And since then, I've created a happy and balanced life for myself. I have a loving wife of more than 10 years, a beautiful seven-year-old daughter. I have five investment properties. I had a very successful corporate career which I've left since left behind to pursue coaching as my mission. And there's one question which drives me. And that question is what if? What if I wasn't able to break out of my old self to become who I am today? What if I was stuck being the boy who lacked confidence, who didn't feel good enough? who didn't feel like he belonged. And when I think of that boy, I think of another classmate of mine in Hong Kong. And he also didn't have any friends. Other kids would jump out of the way to avoid him because he had bad dandruff. And because I knew what it was like to have no friends, I made an effort to befriend him. So when other kids didn't want him as part of a class project, or ask him to join mine when he went to a different class or look for him during recess to give him a game of chess. And when I came back to Australia, I would message him on ICQ, which is the very old version of Messenger. Unfortunately, I lost contact with him. And a few years later, I found out from friends that he passed away from suicide. Had I known back then what I know today about mindset, I could have absolutely have helped him. And that's why it's my mission to help anyone, anywhere in the world to heal their wounds from the past so that they can live their lives to their full potential. And that in turn enables me to live my life to my full potential. If you know anyone who needs help, in Australia we have wonderful services to support people in need. In a crisis, there's Lifeline, there's Beyond Blue, there's Men's Line Australia, there's Suicide Callback, there's Kids Helpline, there's Headspace, there's Blue Knot for complex PTSD, and there's Cure Life for those of different sexual orientations. 
in Singapore, there's SOS, Samaritans of Singapore. There's the Institute of Mental Health. There's the Singapore Association for Mental Health. There's Touch Community Service, and there's the Bram Center. So a bit more about myself and my qualifications. So I'm certified in Neuro Linguistic Programming, Timeline Therapy, Hypnotherapy. I'm also trained in Life Coaching, Business Coaching, Wellness Coaching, and Relationship Coaching. And I combine all these disciplines together to help provide my clients the resources they need to live their lives to their full potential. NLP, Neuro Linguistic Programming, is the language of the mind and how we communicate to ourselves and others. And by changing our negative self-talk, we can make rapid changes to our emotional state, which drives our decisions and ultimately the results we create for ourselves in our lives. Here's a few client testimonials. I'll go through a couple very quickly. So Tanya, she had insomnia for three years. After I helped her to release a lot of anger and sadness from childhood trauma, she had no trouble sleeping after that. She no longer needed to take sleeping medication and she works as a night shift nurse. Nave, um, before she saw me, she had seen 13 different psychologists. And after seeing me, she said that it was the first time she noticed a deep, long lasting change in her thoughts and mindset. And so I'm going to start by talking about emotional triggers. A problem well defined is a problem half solved. And I'd like to start by sharing a story. So many years ago, more than 10 years ago, I was still dating my wife-to-be. So she was my girlfriend at the time. And I had this, and we were at Bicentennial Park in Sydney, and I had this spontaneous idea to rent a tender bike, a bicycle with two seats. I got on in the front and my wife-to-be at the back. And the first thing we did was we went down this steep hill. And as we were going down this steep hill, I was trying to decide, should I turn left or should I turn right? Should I turn left or right, left or right, left or right? I crashed straight into the pole. And back then I had this critical voice in my mind, which would question every decision that I made, whether to go left, whether to go right, even something as simple as getting a television installed on the wall of one of my investment properties. I'll spend the whole day just kicking myself in, in, in the head because I, I think the TV is too high. And it wasn't until I had my own coach question my thought patterns did I realize that this critical voice didn't belong to me. It belonged to my mom. And by understanding the root cause of this critical voice, was I able to let it go? How many of you have heard of Bruce Lee? Bruce Lee was a very famous martial artist. And when he was at the top of his game, all these martial artists will ask Bruce Lee to teach them. And there'll be martial art champions. There'll be kickboxing champions, Muay Thai champions, karate champions. And Bruce Lee would turn them away. Bruce Lee would tell them, I can't teach you because your cup is full. First, empty your cup and then you can learn. And so what I would love all of you to do today is to empty your cup because I've got so much that I'd like to share with you. And I'd like you to switch off your critical voice, critic, the critical voice in your mind, because only then can you truly learn. And so I'd love all of you to be fully present with an open mind with what I have to share today. And so the first question I'd like to ask all of you 
what is the most powerful thing to unlearn from school? And I'd love you to type your answers in the chat. So what is the most powerful thing to unlearn from school? I can see Claire thinking hard. Feel free to type in your answer. What well, what did you learn at school which you could really do without? Like it has no, you know, does not help at all in life. What is the most powerful thing to unlearn from school? <laughs> you must work in the hospital. Failing equals bad. Wonderful. You've got it, Joseph. Failing is bad. So you think of the school grading system. 50% is a pass. 100% is perfect. But in real life, that is not always possible. If you were to talk to... 20 strangers and one or two of them became your friends, that's a success. If you applied for 20 jobs and you only got one job offer, that's still a success. If you spoke, you if you were in business and you spoke to 20 prospects and only one or two signed up for your services, that is still a success. And so one of the most powerful thing to learn, from, unlearn, to unlearn from school is that making mistakes is a bad thing. Failing is a bad thing. Fail, there's no failure, there's only feedback. And if you're not making mistakes, you're not learning, you're not pushing yourself outside of your comfort zone, you're robbing yourself the opportunity to truly learn and to grow. And yes, high marks doesn't necessarily lead to a better life. What, what I can tell you though is Growth, true growth can help you gain a better life. And what's really important is learning to treat yourself like a business, to learn to promote yourself like a business, to invest in yourself like a business, and to take calculated risks like a business. And that will absolutely help you to gain a better life. Another thing to unlearn from school and what we've been taught when we were growing up is often when we're young, we're told to suppress our emotions, to control our emotions. And the problem with suppressing our emotions, controlling our emotions, it's like pushing a beach ball underwater. The more you push it down, the more the pressure builds. The more you push it down, the more the pressure builds. The more you push it down, the more the pressure builds until something bumps you and it could be something inconsequential in the grand scheme of things and the beach ball bursts out of the water. And that's essentially what a panic attack is when you suppress anxiety for too long or an angry outburst when you've suppressed anger for too long or onset of depression when you've suppressed sadness for too long. And the, the problem with suppressing and controlling these emotions, you're not just trapping yourself. And it's not, it doesn't just, it doesn't just wreak havoc on your mental health. It also impacts your physical health. And so a healthier approach is to learn to release these emotions and be free. And then you can be yourself. And so I'd like you to ask yourself some self-reflective questions and so you can either type your answers in the chat or write them down on a piece of paper a problem well defined is a problem half solved so if you spend the time really focusing on understanding the problem it can help you to understand the solution so the first question i'd like you to ask yourself is what triggers you what triggers you emotionally what are the negative thought patterns around this? What are the negative thought patterns underneath the surface which leads to these emotional triggers? How does your body 
physically tell you that you are being triggered, that you are triggered? What are your anxious actions? And what are the negative outcomes due to your anxious actions? And so I'll share a personal story of mine. So back in the day, I used to work as a business consultant for very large financial institutions. And there was one time when I was presenting to the chief marketing officer. And I had spent months preparing this report. And yet when I was giving the presentation, I could feel my heart beat racing. I could feel my face getting flustered. And I, can't, I could hear myself stuttering. And when I think back on that time, I had this negative thought pattern that I wasn't good enough. Who was I to be presenting to the, to the chief marketing officer of this 8,000 plus company, 8,000 plus employee company? And my anxious actions was eating chocolate, eating unhealthily, eating comfort food. And the negative outcomes due to my anxious actions were I wasn't able to present at my best. And because I didn't feel good enough, I didn't chase opportunities for promotion for higher pay. And so I'd love to hear your thoughts around and, get, and really get you to self-reflect. What is it that triggers you? What are your negative thought patterns around this? How does your body physically tell you that you're triggered? What are your anxious actions and the negative outcomes due to your anxious actions? And one thing I'd like you to realize is as you share these, if you share them in the chat or you reflect them on a piece of paper, is that you're not alone. That there are other people, even in this Zoom, who are feeling the same challenges. So... Thank you. Thank you for sharing perceived injustice, unfair feelings. Can't focus at the present situation when you're feeling anxious. These are all very common challenges. And now, I would like all of you to pay attention to the next question. So I'd like you to imagine a young child coming to you with similar problems, with similar challenges. What would you tell them? Imagine a young child coming to you with the same problems that you've just described. What would you tell them? And I'd love to see your answers in the chat. What would you tell a child if they perceived injustice, if they felt unfair, that things were unfair? What would you tell a child who couldn't focus in the present situation, who felt anxious? Yes, to do some deep breathing. What else would you tell them? Claire's smiling, she's like, yes, I've got to them. <laughs> it's okay. Yes, it is okay. It, and it's really important to remind ourselves that it's okay. It's okay. Don't worry. What else would you say to this young child to support them, to bring them up again? Love it, Nala. Listen to her, agree with her, and give her a big hug. And let her know that you're there for her. And so the, the very thing, the same things you would say to a child are things that you can say to yourself. The same things that you do for a child are the same things that you can do for yourself. 
And by the way, in case you're wondering, this is a, a photo of my daughter. And next to her is a painting which I did of her. And this is the first painting I've done since primary school. And, and the wonderful thing about getting rid of all these critical voices and limiting beliefs is you start to believe in yourself and you, you believe that you can do whatever you set your mind to. And so when I painted this life-size painting of my daughter, I just told myself, I can paint and I just painted. So like all of you to not think of a pink elephant. Do not think of a pink elephant. Whatever you do, don't think of a pink elephant. Try really hard and not think of a pink elephant. Put all your effort into not thinking of a pink elephant. So how many of you briefly thought of an elephant? It might have only been a millisecond, but more than likely, yeah. <laughs> and the thing with the subconscious mind is it's really bad at processing negatives. So when, when you tell yourself, don't think of a pink elephant, you're going to think of a pink elephant. When you tell yourself, don't feel stressed, you're going to feel stressed. Don't be anxious, you're going to be anxious. Don't worry about the worst case scenario, you're going to worry about the worst case scenario. Don't crash into that pole, I crashed into that pole. And so what's really important for us to learn to do is instead of focusing on what we don't want to happen, is for us to focus on what we want to happen. And this is how I've, this is why I've come up with my version of the 80-20 rule. So anxiety comes from focusing, obsessing over the worst case scenario all of the time. And it's okay to think of the worst case scenario some of the time because it enables us to plan, prepare, take out insurances, take out contingencies, manage risk, etc. But the problem with focusing on the worst case scenario all of the time is it keeps us stuck. We procrastinate and we can't get to where we want to get to. And so the 80-20 rule is simply this. 20% of the time, sure, allow yourself to focus on the worst case scenario because it enables you to plan and prepare and take out insurance. But the other 80% of the time, focus on what you want to happen and put 80% of your energy into making that happen. And so the first question for you to ask yourself is, what are your worst case scenarios? What are the things which make you most anxious? What are you stressed about? And I'd like you to write them down or type them in the chat. Again, a problem well-defined is a problem half solved. And so if you define this problem, it takes you closer to solving it. So what are your worst case scenarios? That's question one. Question two is what are your best case scenarios? So what are the opposite of your worst case scenarios? So the opposite of ending up alone is being together with someone who cares for you. Or it could be being comfortable being by yourself. Whatever that means to you. And really define what is your best case scenario, the opposite of your worst case scenario. And you are not alone. We're here for you. And then the third question is, what can you do to make your best case scenario happen? So worst case scenario, feeling judged by others all of the time. What is the opposite of this? What is the best case scenario? The, to, the opposite of feeling judged is being accepted, right? So maybe the best case scenario is being accepted by others. Or more importantly, accepting yourself. And what can you do to make this happen? And it could be first accepting truly, deeply, completely accepting yourself. And you find that when you truly and completely accept yourself, others will accept you too. And if they don't, they don't really matter.
And by taking action, you're taking back power to yourself and you're empowering yourself. Often we, in life, we feel like we have really high standards that we aspire to achieve. We set really big goals for ourselves. And that in itself can, can create anxiety within us. That when we have a big goal, it's like climbing a big mountain. And it could take us days, months, or even years to get to the top. And the question to ask yourself is, as you climb up this mountain, every night you need to pitch your tent. When you pitch your tent, do you have the flaps, the opening facing up the mountain or down the mountain? Put your answer in the chat, uh, up or down? If you're pitching, you're climbing a big mountain, do you have the opening facing up or down the mountain? Up, down, up. And so more often than not, we, we have our tents facing up the mountain so that when we wake up, we see where we need to go. But we also see how far we have to go. And that can often lead to stress and overwhelm. And so one thing we can allow ourselves to do is to pitch our tents facing down the mountain so that when we open our tent, we can see our progress, see how far we've come, see the obstacles that we've been able to overcome and be proud of our progress. And now I'm going to share with you a powerful technique to help you to release anxiety. And I'll, I'll, I'll share an example of this. So there was a lady I helped and she had panic attacks, which was so bad that she'll be stuck in bed. And um, she'll, she'll call her boss and say she couldn't get go to work because she couldn't get out of bed. And when I... When I asked her about what, you know, what was triggering that fear, she she said that whenever whenever she thought that her two young daughters could become victims of pedophilia, she would have a panic attack. It would be like an intrusive thought which just comes out of nowhere. And so what I told her to do is to focus on her best case scenario instead of her worst case scenario. But she was really stuck on this exercise. I can't think of the best case scenario. Like, I'm, uh, you know. And so I got her to float up way up high out into the future and got her to imagine herself growing up really old into an old lady, which was quite funny because she's a, she was, she's a young, attractive woman. But I got her to see herself way out in the future where she's like a wrinkly old lady with gray hair. She's a grandmother and her two young daughters have grown up to be strong, confident women with caring partners. And they even have children themselves. So she's now a grandmother. And, and the grandchildren know that they can go to grandmother because they feel safe with her. And that everyone is safe and protected and they all live in the same neighborhood and they're having a barbecue. And, and they're eating delicious food and the kids are playing and everyone's happy. And the more I describe this, this vision for her, she actually broke down crying. Tears of relief. And I wish I had it recorded because as she was sobbing, she said, I understand why you charge so much. <laughs> and what was interesting was after that, Whenever I caught up for her, caught up with her, I'll, I'll ask her, have you had any panic attacks since? And she said, no. Whenever she felt one coming up, she would think of that vision and it would just disappear. And so let me share, the, let me go through the technique with you. 
So more often than not, we are in the present and we're facing out into the future. The problem with this position is there are so many variables which could happen in our future. And those variables give us anxiety, stress. We don't know what's going to happen. And so what we want to allow ourselves to do is to float way out into the future after the event that we were most anxious about and turn around and look back towards now. And more often than not, when you turn around and look back towards now, the thing that you were most anxious about no longer is a problem. Like, like if you think about like when you were, you know, when you were in the last few years, what, what was the thing which gave you the most amount of stress, which you were most anxious about? And you, you think about it now, it's like, it's no longer a big deal. It's like, um, I'll share another story. Um, I went on a trip with some friends to the Philippines. And one of my friends, she spent, she has a like, severe OCD. She spent three months packing a suitcase. She spent, she had planned for every day, every activity, for every cycle within the month. This is what she was going to wear. And when we landed in Manila, our airline had left our luggage in Hong Kong. And she was freaking out. She was saying, F this, F that, F an airline. I told her, don't use a, you, you use a different effort. Use fornicate because it sounds funny. And so fornicating airline, fornicating airport, whatever. Many years after, we still catch up as friends. We're all grown up now. We have children our own, of our own. And even now she can see the funny side of the story. And she's got a story to share which other people can relate to and can see the funny side too. And so the technique is to allow yourself to see yourself way after the event and look back towards now. And what I'll do for you is I'll take you through this process right now. I'll guide you through it. And so I'd like you to pick the number one thing that you're anxious about right now. One of the things you might've written down before. So what is the number one thing that you're anxious about? And we'll focus on that. And now I'll take you through this process. And similar to Claire's process, it starts with some breathing. So I'd like you to take a deep breath in and out. And take a deep breath in and out. And take a deep breath in and out. And the first thing I'd like you to do is to ask your unconscious mind where your past and where your future is. You might say left or right, up or down, in front, behind, diagonal, any direction. And it's your unconscious concept we're interested in, not your conscious concept. So I'd like you to ask your unconscious mind where your past is and intuitively point towards that direction. And then ask your subconscious mind where your future is and point towards that direction again. And now just relaxing your hands, relaxing your body. I'd like you to take a deep breath in and out. And take a deep breath in and out. And take a deep breath in. And out. And I'd like you to float way up high above your body. Float way up high into the night sky. And I'd like you to float higher and higher, higher and higher. And I'd like you to double your height Double your height again. Float up way up high above the soft fluffy clouds. And float way up high into space. 
And I'd like you to notice in space there's nothing. There's no pressure, there's no friction, there's no temperature, there's no sounds, there's no stories, there's no voices, there's no distractions. In space, I'd like you to notice all the twinkling stars all around you disappearing one at a time until you have a clear blank canvas. And there's nothing here except your inner being, peace, calm, and harmony. And now I'd like you to float way out into the future. Float after the event that you were most anxious about. And float a few minutes after that event, a few hours, a few days, a few weeks, even a few years. And instead of seeing the worst case scenario happening, see the best case scenario happening. See what you can see, hear what you can hear, and feel everything you can feel after the successful completion of that event and turn around and look back towards now. And ask yourself, Where's the anxiety? Is it still there? Or has it disappeared? And if you can't visualize the best case scenario happening, see the worst case scenario happening, but also see yourself recovering from the worst case scenario. See how this worst case scenario made you stronger. You learned so much from it. It happened for you to gain certain skills, to gain certain experience, to learn and grow, to create a better life for yourself. And then again, see yourself floating a few hours, a few weeks, a few months, a few years after that worst case scenario. And now see yourself on the top of a mountain, looking down at the mountain and See the progress that you've made and feel proud of your accomplishments. Feel proud of the challenges that you have overcome. Be proud of the person you have become to overcome these challenges. And as you look down this mountain, notice that you had all the resources you needed to succeed. And all you had to do was to activate them. You have all the resources you need to succeed and all you need to do is to activate them. And now drifting down, way down, relax now. Just allow your entire body to rest and relax. And as you go even deeper, all distractions just seem to disappear. And I want you to concentrate on your breathing, breathing in pure relaxation and exhaling all the tension in your body. Feel all the tension leaving the chest area as you exhale. Feel yourself relaxing even deeper with each and every breath. And your breathing is so regular, so easy and effortless as you are relaxing more and more and your entire body is completely and totally relaxing as you drift even deeper down with each and every breath. And you feel a warm, wonderful sense of relaxation and going even deeper down. And you may have noticed that some areas of the body are more easy to relax. And concentrating 
on those areas of the body that you find to be the most comfortable, very relaxed, and concentrating on those areas now, you are recognizing and realizing what there is about those areas that make you so comfortable and so very relaxed and feeling all the sensations in those areas, the most relaxed and comfortable parts of your body and allowing and feeling the comforting sensations of the most relaxed areas of your body begin to spread. And as this marvelous warm wonderful feeling of relaxation spreads to all the parts of the body. The feeling of relaxation becomes stronger and the relaxation spreads out beyond those areas. And continuing to spread to all the parts of the body you desire to relax deeper and even deeper. Picture and imagine the relaxation spreading like the rays of sun, gently warming and relaxing, like the rings of water spreading from a pebble tossed into a gentle pond and the relaxation spreading to every muscle, cell, fiber, and bone in your body. And you're enjoying this tranquil, peaceful relaxation in every part of your body. And with every passing moment, this feeling of deep, tranquil, and comforting relaxation becomes stronger and every cell, nerve, and part of your body knows and enjoys this wonderful sensation. And this wonderful feeling now goes out beyond the physical confines of your body, spreading out far beyond the skin to form a protective shield around you. And you can let this feeling spread far, far beyond your physical body, or keep it close like a second skin. And since this protective bubble or shield is your own creation, you can do with it what you wish. You can use this shield in any way you want to. And the uses of this shield are limitless. It can act as a filter to filter out those feelings or things going on around you and filtering situations that are uncomfortable and allowing you to let in those feelings you wish to let in and experience. And it can act as an amplifier to help you understand people and to help people understand you. And this protective bubble can be invisible or visible to a few people or as many people you wish. And you are using this protective shield any way you choose to use it. And that is okay, because this shield is your own creation. And you are using this shield and enjoying comfort in every part of your body practicing and using this shield and allowing it to spread, allowing it to go beyond the confines of your physical body. And you can experiment with it, making it as large as you like, using it as a transport to another place or time. And the more you use it, the stronger it becomes. And realizing now that when I awaken you, you can return to this place of peace, tranquility, and deep relaxation and use this shield anytime you desire to do so. And you are using this shield 
and feeling the relaxation spread to all the parts of your body. In a moment now, I'll be counting backwards from 10 to 1. And I'd like you to awaken one-tenth of the way with each and every count. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Whenever you're ready, open your eyes and come back into this room, back into the present and back into now. And if you're awake, uh, type something in the chat so that I know that you're awake. And feel free to share how you're feeling right now. Refresh, very relaxed, calm. Wonderful. So we'll just really quickly go through the next few slides. Uh, on long-lasting transformation. And so I'll, I'll, I'll be really quick because I'm going over time now. More often than not, the root cause of our limiting beliefs, negative emotional patterns come from our childhood, especially between the ages of zero to seven. When we're that young, we don't have any emotional filters. So anything that's said to us or happens to us, our subconscious mind accepts, us, accepts that as the truth. And that can form a limiting belief, a limiting pattern, which can limit, impact us for the rest of our lives. And when we think of our negative emotions, we can think of a tree with five core branches, anger, sadness, fear, hurt, guilt. And there are limiting beliefs such as not being good enough, I can't do this, needing to be perfect, being an imposter, etc. And these are all rooted in the past. Anxiety, on the other hand, is future-based. It comes from worrying about the worst-case scenario happening in the future. So in order to release and clear these negative thought patterns, emotions from the past, this is a process I take my clients through. And so typically, when we look at past events, we look at it from position number one, where we're in the present and we're looking towards the past. What I like to do, to do is to bring my clients to see the event from position number two, where we're way up high above this event, looking down at this event. When we're way up high above this, and this is where my approach is different from traditional therapy, psychology, counseling, therapy, et cetera. Because in traditional approaches, you're told to relive the event. And the problem with reliving the event, retelling the story is you become highly emotional and when you increase emotions, you decrease intelligence. The opposite is also true, though. If we can decrease emotions, we can increase intelligence. And we're able to do this if we can see the event from way up high, from space. And then from this position, we can find new insights to change the meaning of the stories. By changing the meaning of the stories, we can change the energy behind it and let go of those negative emotions. Then we'd like to go to position number three, where we're before the event and the chain of events that led to this event. So, so think of a child, a baby. Like when we're really young, we naturally have confidence. We nat naturally have a sense of curiosity, adventure. We, we like trying new things. We break things we don't care. All we want to do is connect with others and have fun. And it's only when we take on external programming that we lose connection with that inner confidence. And so by reconnecting to who we were before these events occurred, we can reconnect with that inner confidence, that natural confidence, which exists in all of us, in our inner child, in our inner children. And only when we're certain that we've cleared the negative 
emotional pattern do we go into the vent? And if there's remnants of that old negative emotion to there, that's fine. We can repeat the process. I tell my, everyone that to see me as a housekeeper, I'm here to clean every speck and dust which doesn't belong in your mind. If, like, imagine your mind is like the living room. If someone came into your living room and dumped a lot of junk in your living room, not only will you throw them out, you throw out the, the junk with them. And so with the subconscious mind, we really want to clear everything which doesn't belong there, that critical voice, so that you can reconnect with your inner confidence. So some quick some questions for you to think of after this session. One is what prevents you from achieving your goals? What are your parents' most limiting beliefs? What are your most limiting beliefs? More often than not, your limiting beliefs are the same as your parents. Why are you committed to letting go of these limiting beliefs? What has it cost you indulging in these beliefs? And what would it cost you in the future if you continue these same patterns? And so here's a few more testimonials. I'll just share, I'll just go through them really go through them really quickly. Roy is amazing at helping uncover limiting beliefs and working through any root causes of trauma and really understand them, see them from space and let them go. Maxine, she, she says that um, my timeline therapy approach was very valuable in terms of understanding where her attitudes to money and relationship from it has come from. And Sayi uh, says, um, I helped him to lose 10 kilos. And yeah, he felt really good after that. And it came from cleaning the mind. And so if you'd like to have a chat with me, um, you can scan the QR code, which will give you a link to um, my booking calendar. Or you can email me at roy at purposeadvisory.com.au. And that's my presentation. So uh, any questions, feel free to ask. Yeah, we're going to have a uh, Q&A session now. <clears throat> if you have any questions for Roy, me, or Claire, now is the chance to ask some questions. And then uh, if you have any questions, uh, yeah, if you have any questions, then yeah, this is pretty much for today. And just before we leave, if we can take a photo together, that'd be great. Uh, if you can... Um, yeah, show your video. Let's no, show your picture. Show your video. And then we take a photo. One, two, three. And then we can, yeah, just take a photo together. That'll be great. Okay. Uh, don't be shy. <laughs> okay. Cool, 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 cool. Anyone else want to show their video? All right. Let's, let's do it. Uh, kind of one, two, three. One, two, three. Okay. Whoa, just hold on. Angela just put on, on again. I'll take another photo. One, two, three. All right, cool. No worries. Thanks for that. So yeah, if you have any questions, uh, yeah, just uh, yeah, just uh, ask any questions. Unmute yourself or any type in the chat box, whatever you want. And I, I'll include my booking link in the chat. Mm -hmm. Cool. Any questions? Angel, iPhone, Belinda, Joseph, JK, Nala, Matudi. You can unmute yourself if you've got questions. Otherwise, yeah, you're free to go. <laughs> Cast this if you don't have questions, if you can share what was your best thing from our, from the, today's um, session, um, webinar, or what was your key takeaways, or what can you implement in your life, uh, changes to be made, that would be great as well.
everyone's quiet. <laughs> Must be a late night tonight, Sunday, yeah? Everyone's back to work tomorrow. All right. Cool. All right, you got a question. How long does it take to change the beliefs? Good question. Typically, a belief doesn't, one belief would take about an hour for, for me, maybe, maybe less. It, it comes down to how committed you are to letting go of the belief. So often I help people to uh, first set goals for themselves, which inspire and motivate them, and then help them to change the belief. Um, the one of the most common beliefs I help people with is not feeling good enough. Um, in addition to the belief, there's there's those other branches of the tree, like anger, sadness, fear, and guilt, which have accumulated a lot from the past. And so typically it takes me uh, five sessions to release all of them. Um, and then after that, I like to focus on negative influences. So we're clearing the influence from mother, father, siblings siblings, ex-partners, etc. And so typically, yeah, five sessions to clear limiting beliefs and negative emotions, and another five sessions to clear uh, negative influences. Um, how to understand triggers when on the surface, it just looks like a reaction to an uncomfortable situation. Uh, that's a very good question. And so it, it takes some introspection. And so um, I'll share an example. Uh, uh, there was a time when I had this manager and basically he, he told me I wasn't good enough and he wanted to performance manage me out of the team. And so, yes, that was a very uncomfortable situation, though the, the emotional trigger for me was I wasn't good enough. And, and my boss was just an external stimulus triggering that response. And so the first step is understanding what is the underlying limiting belief and then, and then shifting it. But for me, before I started these techniques, I, I didn't have this at my disposal. So I just went to a different job. I got a new job at a new company where I was paid more and I had a new manager who, who loved everything that I did. Um, but I still had this limiting belief that I wasn't good enough and I couldn't learn this a specific type of skill. And when I was able to go through that process, which I shared before, which was to find the root cause event, which was for me recognizing that it came from my previous manager and then seeing the event from way up high. And that enabled me to shift that limiting belief that I wasn't good enough and I couldn't learn this particular skill to a new belief that I can learn anything I set my mind to. And then after that, I was able to achieve a lot in my work um, and I got lots of recognition from senior executives. And so, yeah, to understand the triggers on the surface, it's again that process I shared before, which is understanding which event from the past does this current event remind you of. You're welcome. Hello, Michael. <laughs> Any other questions? And feel free to come off mute if you've got a question for myself or Claire or Sam. About bee breathing, straw breathing. Yes. I think um, maybe we can wrap up. It's getting a yeah. little so uh, if you guys have further questions, we've got the link. You've got access to our links to Roy, me, and Sam. And then you can book a, a time uh, to just 
you know, if you have anything you want to further clear, uh, to clarify further, sorry, it's past my bedtime. So <laughs> my brain <laughs> is just, not yeah, just one more thing. One more thing. Uh, we have, we're actually doing a live workshop in Sydney. Uh, I believe in, it's in June 28th. What, what is it? June, June 26th to 28th. So if you guys want to have a, a live experience with us, uh, in person, it's a little bit different. Um, yeah, feel, if you're in Sydney, feel free to join our event coming up, coming up. Yeah, in Mascot. Yes, yeah. we will leave. Let me put the link in the chat. Uh, yeah, I've just put an in-person link in the chat. It's also you can book it through Human Ticks, uh, yeah. where you can meet us in person, and then you can practice some of the technique in person as well. Yeah. Yeah, well, uh, thanks everyone. Uh, it's getting late. Uh, it's past my not not my bedtime yet, but yeah, getting getting close to that. So um, yeah, hope you guys learned something from it today. Uh, from uh, congratulate, uh, great job from Claire and Roy. Uh, yeah, for the um great presentation today, and yeah, class dismissed. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Have you everyone. Yeah, everyone, have a good one. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye.